Dagang salamat Miss Jean o maayong buntag sa tanang naminaw nato karon sa DYMR Radio Pilipinas. Uh, kini si Rachel Nasha, gikan sa Philippine Information Agency and welcome to another episode sa Kapihan sa PIA. Live po kita kalunaw, gikan sa opisina sa Philippine Information Agency Regional Office din sa SBU. O kuyog akong kauban karon for our episode this week, no? Gikan sa DYMR Radio Pilipinas, si Miss Annabel Lagrosas. Mayong buntag, Miss Annabel. Mayong buntag, Miss Rich. Mayong buntag sa itong mga soking pagpaminaw sa Kabisayan o Mindanao o sa atong mga televiewers sa Sky Cable yes. Channel 53. <laughs> Ang atong pagkahisgutan karon for our episode sa Kapihan is all about technology ni siya mm -hmm. and uh, government, I, I guess. No? Although may bawaan na ito later on, no? kaya mara private and public partnership ang um, mm -hmm. na-event ng atong pagkahisgutan, Miss Annabelle. So, before we proceed, maybe yes. atong ipailaila na atong mga uh, panelists. Pindot ka niya itong pag-ahisgutan ka rin may gala sa mga sagingon ni Ms. Rachel nga may kalabutan sa teknolohiya. So, uh, ICT. No? So, dako kayong uh, kalihukan ang uh, pag-ahimoon din sa uh, subo, specifically sa dakbayan sa bugo. Pero sa di pa na atong uh, ipailaila, Kauban na to ang Assistant Regional Director sa DICT or Department of Communication and Technology, si ERD Frederick Amores. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Kapihan. Yeah, kauban po na to diri sa Kapihan karon ang IT Department Head sa Bugo City. Yeah, siya po at maoy uh, President sa Bugo ICT Council, Mr. Roger Tonyakaw. Good morning, sir. And of course, gikan sa kagingon ni Ms. Rachel Gay, na gikan sa private uh, sector, si Mr. Wilfredo Saa Jr. or June Saa. Oh. Ang Managing Director sa C.O. or C.I.B.O. So, niya tao-taon na ito ang uh, mahibawaan ko. Kunsa ni si C.O. So, first, siguro, no, kay uh, kung bago pa lang sa pandungog sa itong mga suking pigpaminaw, sa itong televiewers, ito siguro yung pangutaan na Ms. Rich, no, ni A.R.D. Amores, kung kunsa ni ang ang iyahang uh, department to, ang D.I.C.T. Kung sa'yo function, ani, sir, Ah, okay. No, at pinaglal na ito ang mahibawaan. Um, the DICT actually stands for Department of Information Communications Technology. Only ang, I think, pinakabak po ang uh, department ito sa Bill, no? Mm -hmm. uh, we're just a little bit over two years old. So. And uh, our main function is basically to oversee the ICT uh, aspects of government, no? whether in promoting the ICT industry mm -hmm. or in improving uh, the use of ICT in government. So, basically, mauna ang mong function na ang ito mga katash agencies as of, uh, as of now, no? Ang um, then ang um, National Privacy Commission, National Telecommunications Commission. Okay, ganang salamat, sir. Si Sir John, kaning unsama ni CIB or CIB.O, sir? Okay, ang um, pasabutan ng CIB.O, it stands for the Cebu IT PPM that Organization. Uh, that's our name starting um, May 2017. Uh, prior to that, we were called the Cebu Educational Development Foundation for Information Technology, or CEDFIT. CEDFIT, by the way, is not a new organization. It was organized way back in March 2001, when the IT DPM industry of Cebu was just starting. So we are the first ICT council in the whole Philippines. And because of the success of CEDFIT in creating the IT BPM industry in Cebu, uh, way back starting in the mid of 2000, that's 2005, 2006, um, they saw our success. So a government agency called then the Commission on ICT, which is now the Department of ICT, encouraged through the efforts of Mon Ibrahim, who is now a USEC, a, a former USEC of the ICT. Uh, he encouraged other key cities of the Philippines, such as Bacolod, Iloilo, Davao, Cagayan de Oro, Santa Rosa, and so many other cities in the Philippines to establish 
their own ICT Council patterned after the model of SEDFIT, mainly because of our success in building the IT VPN ecosystem of SIP. So, to no work, I know this Annabelle because the private sector has a really strong makita na to, no, network organization na on ICT councils and it's very good to know and so good yun ang, ang, ang pioneering uh, council for that and so good din yeah. sa, through said fit. Let me just add a bit because I was not able to explain why SIP that old. Mm -hmm. So it's we're now called the Cebu IT VPN that organization. No? We purposely put a dot so that we can be easily identified as a dot org or something, an organization that is related to the uh, dot com world or dig a digital uh, world. And uh, the other reason is that if we don't put the dot in SIP.O, we will sound like a famous Italian restaurant in Manila. <laughs> so that's why we place the dot. So yeah. it's now SIP.O to really uh, distinguish ourselves yes. from that uh, famous restaurant uh, in Manila. Uh, so that is At least my name report a little sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. So, this is Annabelle, no? uh, makita na to that the, uh, since uh, the ICT, uh, one of their objectives is to promote um, the use of technology in government and the private sector is already um, spearheading a lot of initiatives when it comes to development of technology. So that too, a public or private sector has come together. Okay, they need to work together. Muna kung saan yung ilahang initiatives ang kanin atong pag-anisbutan ka Miss Annabelle, yes. which is the MICTOR conference or the Visayas ICT Organizations Conference, which will be hosted by Bogo. So that's why ato pagutan on si Sir Roger as the host, no? Um, probably Sir Alito, Sir Roger, a little background lang siguro sa about the conference na pagahimoon niya sa Bogo. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Victor Conference or SIAS ICT Organization Conference, that's an annual event, a gathering of all ICT councils in the Visayas region. And with their stakeholders like the academic, the public sector, the government, private, and the industry also, the business sector, and whose main objective is for, for them to be able to discuss the current trends, issues, and challenges affecting the, the ICT sector in their locality. So we're just so happy that this year, Pogo uh, will be hosting this event. And, and we do not choose ourselves and uh, it is the organization that chooses which uh, was, uh, uh, as as a as a sa Bugo siya i-hold, sir? Uh, it will be in the Marialina Conference Hall. Uh -oh. Sa asa ni nga? Sa Municip uh, City Hall? Or? It's, uh, it's about it's a brand new conference hall. Ah, and, yeah. Okay. Uh -oh. Maria Nina. So it will be on Kanus Adusha. It will be on February 21. Uh -huh. Until. It's a one day conference. It's a one day conference. expect na mo, mo attend sa conference? We are expecting 200, 200 delegates all over Philippines. Wow. Uh -oh. But I think mga 80% is coming from the size. Ah, okay. okay. So this is also a uh, naputay participants na outside Visayas. Yes. I uh, see. Oh, oh. So, um, uh, so and uh, 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 Oh, go. so what about you? In a way, may medyo may pagka national oh, po yeah. dahil dating national. niya, no? Local but national ang scope. Yeah. So sir, maybe a brief rundown lang kung sa ato ang, um, what will they expect during the conference uh, when it comes to topics and also the speakers that we have invited. Maybe Sir June can also add po kung sa i-dugang ni Sir Roj. Okay, uh, one of our highlights of the, on the 21 uh, is the talks about uh, building a smarter city, which will be um, uh, delivered by a Singaporean uh, a speaker, a, a speaker, yeah, a speaker from IBM coming from uh, Singapore. So, in a way, international is a lady who might be a Singaporean speaker. And then there will also be talks about how ICT has enabled the livelihood 
and improve the livelihood of Bugo City. For example, in the fishing industry, um, there is one in, uh, fishing company there that has grown so in exponentially because of uh, of because of technology, particularly technology to their uh, systems. So, ang money siya ang I think na murag nakita na to Miss Annabel ang international na scope would be kabarin sa smart cities with which I will ask Sir Jun later no kung unsa man ning smart city kay when it comes mo to smart community Singapore we get actually ang una yung mauna una an ani kay how they use technology to address to solve the issues sa ilahang country no and also we highlight na to ang local na to nga governments who are really kaning maximizing technology sa ilang pagpadagan sa how they run their local government. So, ang um, kaning ato ang ano, maybe Sir June can explain siguro na lang ang um, kabahin sa kaning smart CP survey. Where I think this is one of your goals that you want to see nga naa din sa ato ang mas namudaghan din sa ato ang local areas. Uh, we invited a speaker from IBM, uh, coming from their Singapore office. We'll be talking about smart cities now. Uh, we purposely did this, did this because uh, the city mayor of Pogo is very interested to make their city as one of the smarter cities here in the country. In fact, they're very advanced in laying out the fiber optic lines within the city and they now have their own command center right in their city hall and uh, they're planning to offer more government services that can be offered online to their people so in short they're one of the more forward-looking cities and we might credit this to their mayor mayor carlo martinez who used to be a former deputy commissioner in the national telecommunications so uh, in a national office, so he has been very exposed to technology and he is one of our younger mayors who is very forward-looking so that's why he is uh, trying to bring all these advantages to his city uh, laying down the foundation, uh, the infrastructure and hopefully attract more uh, businesses also and create more jobs in the city. One of the things that we're planning for this uh, conference is to invite uh, our big players and uh, so far we already have the confirmation of three top executives from the local contact centers here in Cebu. Uh, we're expecting uh, Mr. Franklin Pasailuon um, of Sykes, he's one of the senior site directors of Sykes. And we're also expecting Ms. Jocelyn Cannon of uh, Qualphone. And we're expecting Mr. Glenn Valencia of Teleperformance, who's also one of their site directors in, here in the city. And uh, they will be sharing to the people of Bogo uh, what are the things that they will look in a location for them to consider uh, creating a satellite office, or in short, to bring the jobs to these uh, areas. So that's why it's very important that uh, the people from Bogo will also listen to the speakers so that they can better prepare and plan what they need to do so that finally they will have their first major BPO in their city. And of course with the presence of these BPOs, it will create jobs just like what we see here in Cebu. Way back in 2001, we only had about 1,200 people directly employed in this industry. And we can count by the fingers who were here during that time. We had Lexmark, we had LEC, and we had a local company called Nankai who was here to start the industry. And now, look what we have. Uh, by year end, December 2018, I think we already have approximately 160,000 people directly employed by this industry. And there is such thing as a multiplier effect. No? There's a, I think, a factor of three multiplier effect. And that will create a support system for this industry. Our tricycle drivers, hapal hapal drivers, the therapists in the spas, the waitresses and waiters in the restaurants, and so many other institutions, business establishments that were created. So I think that is one of the dreams of Bugo to probably even just 
being a part of it, a part of the success of Cebu to Bogo City. Okay, congested pagkakaroon mo. No? Yes. Ms. Annabel, congested pa sa Metro Cebu ang, ang, ang kanil atong industry, IT oh. industry. Sige, Sir Roch. Uh, I just would like to add that uh, I, I, I'd like to give credit also to the former Mayor of Bogo, Mayor mm -hmm. Julie Martinez, mm -hmm. for he's the one who started the uh, integrating ICT to the government, mm -hmm. yeah. the government uh, services, uh -huh. to, to governance. Mm -hmm. Because in 2008, I remember in 2008, he was the one who initiated the um, computerization project in business permit and licensing system, which is now being the Nanana uh, Republic Ataron for ease of doing business. Yeah, I for a I imagine that that was 11 years ago, 2008. Ahead of his time. I mean, just happened. And also the PKS, or the property tax monitoring system. So, well, um, and I remember also in 2012 when I joined the, uh, the government, in the local government unit, he was the one who told me first, my first, uh, function, uh, my first uh, mission is to, okay, Roger, you go out and find out on saan na to invite ng BPO there is a Duan. So that was, that was my mission at that time in 2012. And then, but finally, we were able to, we, uh, all the, uh -oh. yeah, we, we were able to invite them in Bogo after six years, <laughs> seven, uh, eight years, mm -hmm. and with, with this uh, development, there will be discussions also from the from the BPO uh, themselves, what needs to be done yeah. para uh -oh. locate sila dito sa Bogo. Dako kini siya o impact ni sa Annabel, no? In the local government. Yes. O sa siguro sa requirement sa mga BPO, standing kuan fiber optics. Yeah. Mali siya o sa, no? O niya. Dahil siguro kayo pa sila. So, na-invite na ni mo, sir. Natuma na ni mo yung mga first mission. So, ikaan ko lang, no? With katong explanation nila ni Sir Jun Ganiha, are we nakita din natin sa kaimportante nga ang local governments hmm. need to really kind of prioritize also okay sama sa ating ni Sir Jun dili ba musuod ang investments oh. ang investors di ay kung dili ma-provide nila ang kinahanglan oh. sa investors so siguro sa DIC ay sige ako ipamunta na kay ERB no kung na oh, maybe also si Sir Jun can provide his inputs for after na ano ba dad na ba ang LGUs are we seeing kay sama sa kay Sir Roy and experience sa Bogo. May ba ito si, si former mayor kay naka ahead of his time ng ang iyahang na nakita na niya dito ni Padul nga nagsugod na sila like ako personally makasubi po ko Miss Annabelle I'm about to to also file for my sedula mulokan ko sa sedula ang Sulu City online na online na oh, pero wala pa ko pasuway no so I have to find out by later on kay nun sila nga nakat na ang dinakakinahang lang linya pa bayad na lang kaderetsyo sa ease of doing business so it that was an impact actually on how people um in the daily lives ba small businesses and uh, even mga employees so sir sa LGUs na to are you seeing a lot of naanabay daghan ubay ubay na ba ang pariha sama sa buko nga nag prioritize na sa technology um uh, that's true no i think there's uh there's a trend now for local governments to be uh, more keen in implementing technology in their areas. No? Uh, I remember when I first joined government many years back, uh, it was a challenge getting uh, local governments to automate and other priorities like roads uh, and other infrastructure. No? But uh, today we see a lot of local governments uh, really appreciating the importance of technology as uh, so the case of Pupo and a, few, a number of other cities and even municipalities. No? In fact, uh, last week I was in uh, Samar, Northern Samar, to inaugurate the implementation of our online EBPMS system in one local municipality. You know? It was really far. Uh, and uh, I was talking to the mayor, and he was very receptive. He, he knows that uh, he needs to use technology to be very competitive. And as I said, especially we have, we have a change in the guard in a lot of local governments with the younger chief executives <laughs> who appreciate uh, technology. But uh, I, I don't like to sound that uh, I have, uh, it's only the younger, there are a lot of older chief executives also who appreciate technology. You know? So uh, we see a lot of that. 
a lot of them are also building their local infra. Uh, we're talking to a number of lo local key executives who are, especially in areas that there are no current infrastructure. No, uh, if you go, if you if you try going around Cebu province, for example, even in our province. There are places that are dead, no? that spots for signal, and we're working with some of them in terms of trying to help them build. Uh, they have taken the initiative, no? building local infra, not waiting for the telcos to come in, uh, to make it happen. A very good example again is Bogon. They have built a fiber optic network around the city. So they are uh, prepared for the future, no? because eventually uh, technology, uh, especially the, the networks, no, will be a uh, part of the lifeblood of the the local government. No? Because when businesses come, that's the first thing they ask: no? Is there infrastructure available? And infrastructure now not just means roads, water, corriente. It also now means internet. And, yes. uh, <laughs> and that's why we at the ICP we're also implementing a lot of technology initiatives. Like for example, where we've been implementing the free the free Wi-Fi initiative. Uh, all over the country, though we have actually met quite a number of challenges because we discovered that uh, the telcos really do not have much presence in a lot of the places. So they have, you can have a signal for your know, uh, 2G lang or for calls, no? but uh, if you start using data in a lot of places, it's very difficult to get. And so right now uh, we have discovered that that's why there is some quite number, and we, we have to get the. Uh, Siguro request of portations from our citizens no, in the uh, implementation, but we are really working towards that there. No? And together with the local governments, because they have taken the controls to help build infra in their localities. So we're, we're progressing. No? Uh, the speed of deployment now is getting better compared to the previous year. So we really appreciate the local initiatives as well. Uh, the various local governments in the Visayas that have dealt with. Uh, in implementing that. No? So that's really true. We need technology, especially the internet nowadays. So we're also working on our part to provide, to help uh, provide that. And of course, with the support of the private sector and uh, the local government. Yes, definitely. Salamat. Na curious lang ko, Sir Roach, katoy mo ang giingon ba sa nang uh, ang ICT, no? Katabang ba sa livelihood? Especially sa katoy mo giingon fishing uh, industry. So, kung saan ni pag-agit sa tuwang mga mananagat, no? Ang ining uh, giingon na itong teknolohiya, Sir. Pwede yan itong picture mo. Kita na kami tao, Miss Annabelle, uh, farmer to us sa, uh, ano? Nga gagamit o tablet o tablet. Oh. So, Sige, Sir, Sir Roach. <laughs> oh. Dito na ako ni Ibrahim ang speech <laughs> ang, ang talks oh. at lang. But oh. I think one of the, uh, I, just to give you the idea, oh. night fishing company niya who is using now solar technology. Mm. So, mas efficient ang pag-collect sa isda. Kaya naman naman kayo scanner. Diba ah, naman ka, okay. nabi ng isda, naglabo diri niya. Oh. Diba naman ka, asa nagpundog ang isda. So, ah. dili na ka mag- Dilit na ka mag-chamba-chamba ba? O pangita ba? And then, um, yes. So, that's technology. That's so important. Wow. Oh, oh. uh, Wala ko ka-expect ha, na sonar na kay... Kaya nang sonar na sa mga mga kanan, sir, kaya sa submarines. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they send out the waves. Oh, oh. So, so uh, sa local niya nga fishing nga uh, pagdiha, uh, sir, sa Bogo. In fact, during the uh, second day, mm -hmm. there will be kanang you know, live day muna. But uh, we go out in the sea. Ano yung makita na kailangan ng mga fishing boats pero na ay nagdungag sa last ba? Nakakita na ni mo. So, kinahan lang mga ito. Oo, ato na yung ano yun niya. Amo na ingan na niya ato ang PIO sa Bogo to invite the media during the... Oo, to publicize, no? Kay Murad, kaning EUC technology being used in the everyday lives of the ano. Kaya ang technology sa ato ang mag-una, muna-una, ano naman ko nila, Facebook, ano. Pero actually, dili, no? Ang technology, more in changing how people do their jobs, ang ilahang mas efficient sonar na ang pag- Oh, so oh, now we will be sure man, mga high tech na lang sila, ilang bangka na So balik kaya na do ka ang katung mga gagmay kisda, pwede na, 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 pw
na gato kay sa una. Pusong yun ko. Anan, happy rose. Chapel na. Okay. So, okay. Na ko yun. Tawo nila pagkakit. Ot sa technology. So, siguro, mga gagmay na itong mananagat ka ron, maabot nga mga katugigan. Makaribaw na po sila o unsao nila. No? Pagpanagat na sila. Ay, nagyong mga sila. We look forward also sa siguro sa next year, po Sir June, kung kinsa na po ang host na ito ka local pa rin. Okay, I think Gipotanggi, they are putting the spotlight on local governments that are nai best practice ba? Oh, when it comes to technology. Oh, more than that, my thing, no, ngas onas nila glungan glungan bisan na siya na karon do nila na mga makadita ko ng sa dapita, Sir John. The reason why we're bringing this event to Bogo is we want to show, especially those people in the countryside, that you can use technology in your day-to-day lives to improve. Your livelihood to improve how you uh, use information to make your life better. So these are the things that uh, we want to bring to the countryside. Because right now we we're thinking that technology is only being used by big companies, mm. but it's high time that we bring down the technology even to the grassroots level. Mm. And then technology, magulo grassroots, magimagulo sila. They don't we don't associate them, no, but. Uh, Kanino kanin ang mga initiatives na ibuhat karon especially like the Victor Conference, usa ni siya ka maayog yun nga makita na to nga na kanang teknolohiya being used for social good. No? So, Miss Annabelle, namang goy, not only is it a conference, yes, it's so, also okay. a job fair. Yes, so, no. Siguro Sir Roger can discuss more on sa maning job fair, uh, mga detalye ka ba in Alicer? Kaya para ka itong mga interesadong mga play, no, maka-add to. Masa may February 21 and 22. Sa 22 na ang job fair. Okay. At doon sa that will be held in sports, ah, sports complex. Ah, Bungo Sports Complex. And then we're expecting at least minimum of 1,000 applicants. And some of them will be hired on the spot. Directly, oh. And it's a BPO job fair. Okay. So we are also would like to invite everyone to what? Ito lang mga nasa working age, 18 and about. 18 and about. Pero pinakabok ang companies na po participate? At least five top BPO companies in Cebu City. We have Qualcomm. Uh, yeah, uh, the following companies have confirmed to be there. Uh, we have Concentrix, uh, one of our big players here. We have Teleperformance, we have uh, Sykes, we also have Qualphone, and there's a fifth one uh, who's joining. So five, Nika? Yeah, uh, at least we have five uh, BPO. Oh, so it will be... Uh, But, but you're, you're also being like a bogo, of course, no? Ang invite na to nga kaning applicants. Also open for, like, mo travel din sila ni Mexico City. Pwede ba? Oo. Pwede guys. Pwede guys to nan. Um, in fact, we are opening this to uh, 50 kilometers radius. Sa ah, bogo. okay. So maybe uh, as far as Bantayan Island, Ayun. the Vila, uh, 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 and uh, the Bantayan, uh, and Tangin. They can come over, no? They can come over. Pero, kung saan ko lang saan ni Mag, so good, sir? That's scheduled 9 to 5. 9 to 5. Okay, so, this is a day after, no? Sa ito ang Victor Conference na ay job fair. BPO, ay for BPO ni siya, BPO job fair. Yeah, so, we need to say dapat related to IT, ang inyuhang mga skills or experience, 18 years and above? Well, not necessarily. As long as you're computer literate, that's very important. The second is you have good communication skills because you'll be dealing mostly with the North American market, so you're expected to speak English quite well. And of course, you are passionate and willing to work in this industry because we have a different working time. Uh, since we're serving the North American market, so that means we work while most people are sleeping. So that's from 10 o'clock in the evening up to 6 o'clock in the morning. So 
that's the main challenge there. Oh. Yeah. In other words, age factor plays in us. Kayo Yes. 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 Mas mali yung ganyan itong uh, direct to mga senior high schools, bakit may watch ang mga kumot dito? Pero, sige sir, sir. Let me add real thing now. Uh, take note that we're, we are entertaining even graduating senior high schools or senior high school graduates, no? Because since we implemented uh, senior high in our basic education system, the last two years, the senior high is supposed to be equipped with skills that will help them find jobs. So one of the things that we're promoting among the public schools and even the other schools is to undergo the LEAP training, which is about learning English application for Pinoy. So this is a 40-hour training program that was designed by UP Diliman, and of course with the inputs of the industry. And the objective of this training is for the students to improve their oral communication skills and at the same time, their comprehension skills. No? So it's, it's a, a self-based, uh, well, it's a self-managed training program. So as long as this program is downloaded in the computer labs of your school, and you have a headset with you, then you can learn even on your own. And it's a very engaging program since uh, the format is like a gamified version. So it's like playing games and at the same time learning how to speak the English language well and to understand the English language well as well. Kung dili ka kapadayon sa imuhang pagtuon sa college na maka trabaho na ka. Pero ang ilahan na pong nakita po na goal pong pang mga ginikanan nga kasagaran mga bata matugyod sa mga call centers, no? Kung mm -hmm. niya, earn na sila niya. Dag po kahit swindo. Yes. Oo, oh, niya. Oh. Dili na mo padayon o oh, iskwila. Iskwila, no? Mm -hmm. So, uh, usas na mga challenges, mm -hmm. Sir John? Uh, on the contrary, um, Last year, we had this pilot with APAS National High School and in partnership with uh, one of the biggest PPO here in Cebu. No? Mm. And as a result, because of that lead training, and then they underwent immersion inside mm. that company for about 600 hours, um, the company reported a 67% employability of the senior high graduates. Well, what is 67%? If you compare this with the normal in the industry, the normal is only 15 to 20 percent, and this is with college level to college graduates. So it was really a breakthrough. It was a breakthrough pilot that deserves to be uh, emulated by the other schools so, because uh, it has increased the employability rate by as much as four times. Because for 15 to 20 percent, they were able to hit 67 percent. And the good thing is that uh, these students, when well, they were immersed, some of them were even earning uh, some kind of a stipend or an allowance, and their parents were very happy. But uh, what can a senior high student earn, and at the same time learn along the way? No? And at the end of the training, they were even given job offers by the company. But most of the students, even though they were qualified for the jobs, they decided to proceed to college. Most but, of them yes, a the majority of them. But some decided to work, but at the same time, they availed of the company's offer to study at the same time. So they were given uh, some financial assistance and some arrangements with their uh, work schedule so that they can still study and work at the same time. 
may kain nga, no? Ha? Sa una, uh, because there was a skills gap for a yes. time, di ba, Sir June? Sa iting karong, wala naman siguro good ang skills gap because the address na sa Department of Education nga. Making sure nga, kung sa itong ikinahanglan sa industry, na anak, na train na ang mga bata. Yes, uh, admittedly, at the start, there was a huge skills gap, but Right now, we see a lot of partnerships between the academy, the industry, and with the support of the, our government agencies. In fact, right now, we're working very closely with Cebu City DepEd to address this skills gap. Yes. Uh -huh. So, good on Miss Annabelle. I think, no, um, we can entertain na ba? Questions, questions from, from our media. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Yes, yes Miss. Question lang for the panel. What is uh, the current standing of the country, also in the region, when it comes to the ICT world? Okay, we know, uh, again, we're not going, in the perspective of the public, we can't exactly readily say that we have smart cities. Even if we are uh, top the social media users, we're not exactly uh, very known for our technology. So what's the standing of both the nation and the region, the province, when it comes in the ICT world? It's a very hard question, <laughs> especially for us. But seriously, um, I think uh, from a from a national perspective, I think the Philippines is in terms of the industry. You know, for example, in the BPO world, we're number one, I think, in the world right now. So we'll actually be the for non contact centers for for non for non voice. Uh, that's a non voice part. Uh, for the non-voice fiber, we're probably second or third uh, after, of course, the big players like India. So, in terms of the industry, we have we 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 are huge, no, in the global market. And the DICD, in fact, uh, has annual uh, trade missions to the various markets like Australia, Japan, United States, uh, and to a certain degree, Europe. In terms of promoting the industry, either bringing investors here or uh, help selling the services that we offer here, no, instead of our uh, Filipinos going abroad to work, they can work here for uh, big, these big companies and bring the jobs here. You know? So I think in that aspect, we're 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 doing quite well. You know? In fact, uh, we're expecting that the uh, revenues, the uh, in incoming remittances, will overtake the OFW remittances you know, from the industry. So we're I think we're looking at maybe 28, 29 billion dollars. Uh, for the industry coming uh, coming here, you know? that's why we foresee. Uh, well, there are some times that there's a weakening of the peso. There's also some certain times that the sold the dollars, so uh, we have a strong currency. So in fact, uh, I think recently I read that uh, we have one of the relatively stable currencies now you know, in, in our area. In terms of the technology, the second aspect. You know, uh, I think we are, well, we are good in social media when we are acknowledged. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact uh, just uh, for those who are not quite familiar, uh, we actually signed a new agreement with Facebook. So Facebook uh, acknowledges, I guess, are important in the global market. So we, we have signed an agreement with them that they will build a fiber optic line from the United States, California, to the Philippines. Wow. And then our counterpart, lang, it's for free. And our counterpart is just the ca cable landing station in uh, we're building in uh, Aurora. So, so uh, with that in place, we would have soon uh, when that uh, line is completed, maybe later this year. Uh, they have committed. Facebook has committed to give us about two terabits of uh, connectivity. That's a lot. That's about two two million. MBPS. So, sir, quick question: that does it yes. mean uh, faster na ang um, connection? Uh, yes, we believe it will be faster. Actually, uh, just to correct the notion, in the Philippines, the it, this is my, my take on this. There is a lot of good connection. In fact, we wouldn't have the video industry if we had slow connection. Ang um, problema lang karos, mahal lang siya, no? So if you really want, like uh, I saw a post, in, a friend of mine posted in their office, they have 400 Mbps in their office. So if you have the money to to pay for it, you can get as much connection as you want. Okay, just imagine a BPO with thousands of people. They have a huge amount of bandwidth requirement. 
But they can afford it. No, but for your common tao, so so and and challenge actually is to reduce the cost mm -hmm. of uh, availability of the net here to the citizens. No? So uh, and. We have to remember that the infrastructure to go out of the country for the internet is also expensive. But with these new developments, for example, with this agreement with Facebook and a lot of this new, uh, for example, the new Dalibo coming in, so we, we improve the options and uh, availability of these technologies so that hopefully it will trickle down so we'll have uh, a fast internet at a lower cost. So that's really the challenge. And availability because in some places, like in Cebu, you can get 4G, but if you go around other places outside the metro, then you have challenges, even in Cebu province. So you go to some places here, Lisoda, Collection, no? So we hope that we improve the coverage. This is really the challenge. Right? Improving the coverage for high-speed internet and reducing its cost. So I think that's a challenge. So for example, going back to the case of Buko, so hopefully with all this infrastructure, uh, with the connection to Buko as well, so the cost of uh, bringing it to the households will eventually be more uh, affordable enough. And because the government, like local government of has intervened and provided the infra, so telcos, for example, who will connect there, they can make, uh, they can have an agreement, for example, with Buko to, instead of, uh, building their own infra because that's what make that's what makes it expensive. Every time you build your own, it's mahal. In other countries, for example, they have shared uh, infrastructure. That's why Karun, uh, hot in the news, the DICT has been working towards uh, working with uh, independent tower uh, builders. No, so Telco uh, did not build their own tower uh, for facility. They can just put in their radios, their equipment. So, because the infra is there Because the infra is expensive. Mahal ba na mong ka ng infrastructure. Mas parato ba ng active components. So, but getting the permits, liso kaya na. So, kung mag, in one location, ang tulo or pat katel ko, mag toko ng tower. So, mahal yun na. So, at more pat, ito yun ang sa mga citizens. Okay, of course, by lahat mga lahat ito as consumers. So, but in fact, if makasilim sila, hopefully, ang the logic is, if instead of four towers, usana lang, so that means you save about seventy-five percent. Now that is the logic that we're looking at. So hopefully the cost of internet will really drop uh, the next few months or years, no? uh, to the point that we'll become competitive, same as in maybe in Japan or in Singapore or in uh, Korea, no? where there is no to be high speed. <laughs> Uh -huh. Well, uh, just to confirm with what Rick has said earlier, uh, we have one of the best uh, telco infrastructure here, not only in the country, but also when you compare it with the global standards. Huh? Manila, whatever is in Manila is in Cebu, and this is very globally competitive. But these are serving the big companies. So if you have the money, then they can give you uh, that kind of service. No? And they can even sell this technology to other countries because it's really advanced. But that's uh, serving to the bigger companies.
Well, this is in regards to the uh, government's plan for farming modernization in sa atong mga farmers to make them globally competitive. Well, we have a bulk of that, um, perhaps 10 billion of the plan of the government uh, to use also technology uh, in um, helping our farmers uh, be globally competitive. Or sorry. Ay, sa farmers, kayo man naman top one, <laughs> mga mananagat. Pero I'm not so, so sure no, if the ICT is um, uh, Maybe not so much details, no, because uh, our, the role of the DIT is basically is a blur. No? For example, so uh, there are no platforms today, for example, where farmers can, uh, can have access to the markets, yes. uh, avoiding a lot of uh, middlemen, Middle. for example. No? There are now a lot of developed platforms for that. So that's one way in which technology is going to help farmers getting better prices for their produce and getting consumers to be able to access these uh, products a little bit more cheaply. You know. uh, there are also a lot of technologies now that will help in the actual farming process. For example, with uh, the use of GPS and communication, you can now get a lot of sensors for uh, like IoT devices to monitor like soil, soil levels, uh, the weather. So you can now have a more pre predictable uh, situations in which farmers can now uh, adjust. No? For example, so the what are we going to do? Or uh, soil pH na to, acidic na kayo, or uh, moisture level, uh, there are some crops that are very sensitive to water, uh, levels of water, you know, uh, so those are some ways technologies can, can help. No? Uh, but we in the ICT, our main function is really just to enable. So for example, we, we support a lot of activities, we work with other government agencies uh, in uh, develop, uh, the delivering programs for the various constituencies of the in the country. Okay. So, what naman yung taibong oras? Ms. Rich, ano yes. na si Oro? Paka yung ano, parting statement. Yes. Tanga po ang mga panelists, no? Kung sa ilang panawagan sa uh, publiko o gusto mga informasyon nga ipadangat sa itong mga suking tipaminaw, sa itong mga televiewers, sa itong ang mga nagtanaw karon sa live sa FB, sa PIA Cebu, ah, uh, ato silang uh, hatagan o panahon so nahon silang siguro na ako si Sir John uh, Sir John sa ang uh, managing director sa SIP that uh, since we're promoting the 2019 Vector Conference in Bukos City so we would like to invite our viewers and our listeners to join this event this will happen on February 21 the Victor Conference, and on February 22, we will have a big job fair for with our PPO company partners. And uh, since we're celebrating the month of heart right now, Valentine's Day, especially tomorrow. So with this celebration, we are using technology to express our love for our cities, and of course for our country as well. So happy Valentine's Day to all. Happy Valentine's Day. We're happy to you guys, sir. <laughs> si sir Roger Tonyakao, ang IT Department Head sa Bugo City and President sa Bugo ICT Council. Niya. Sila po ay mo-host ni Minda Kukay ng event. Ang Victor uh, event, no? Uh, Victor Conference and Job Fair. Sir? Okay. Um, all of these things, all of this, uh, what the local government of Bugo is doing, Boils down to one thing, that's job generation, job creation. So because if you can provide the job opportunities for our people, then um, you give them the purchasing power also, and that grows the economy. So, they have a business premise. Diha. In fact, our team karon is moving forward towards digital countryside, creating jobs, business opportunities and enhancing livelihood. Uh, that's why I'm also uh, inviting atong mga job seekers on February 22 for the BPO uh, job fair. Right? That will also be a 
Kaya na, test ko na sa mga if we have the man power to supply for the locators. So, magduha ang effect alin. So, I hope nga those applicants from neighboring as far as Bantayan Island and Bantayan, Tuburan, Tabuilan, Tabugod, at tumo dito para Because that will be the second question na pamuntaan niya sa BPO. Aside from na ako yung infrastructure, na ah, do you have the talents? Ah, bon. So, okay, we will locate. Okay. So, nagkanaon niya po ba na boarding houses niya dito sa Pugo or mga condo? Malipay na itong mga tricycle drivers. Sakyan na sila. So, tuyot na ang natalang economy. So, ulang po na ginoon niya ang kuan siyudad sa bukong. And what better way to do that is to go towards the direction of ICT. Yes. That's what we are preparing for. Okay, dakan ka yung salamat sa roads. Si Assistant Regional Director of DICT Region 7, ERD Frederick Amores, sir. Um, First, uh, like what my other co-panelists here mentioned, uh, we hope to see you all uh, in Pogo for this annual conference. So, and as mentioned, to highlight the developments in the countryside. No? Because the DICT is really here to support the development of the ICT industry, not just in the urban areas like Mexico, but also in the countryside as well. In fact, our thrust is really to create more digital opportunities and jobs in the countryside. No? So, uh, 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 just be assured that the DICT is really working hard to enable all the things that need to be enabled for us to have a fully digital economy and uh, of course improve the lives of our citizens. No? So as what uh, Jun mentioned earlier, Happy Valentine's <laughs> and Sansa Tani. Valentine's <laughs> Okay, dagan kay salamat, Miss Rich. Nakonek na kisa ato mga speakers, Miss Annabel, no? Ang ang Valentine sa technology, but then again, technology na ano po nasa sa na ano po nasa ron sa modern love na gitawag, no? Mo nang it's still a lovely day, it was a lovely discussion, no? Ato ang na ano karon na hitabo, and it would like to thank, of course, the Bogo City LGU and si Sir Jun, Sir Roger, si Sir Rick, and of course, ang PIO na to sa Bogo City nyo for making this possible and I arrange for the kapihan. Yes, also si Mayor Carlo. Oh my sis. Muna na, nahimong best practice po na to ang ang Bogo City na LGU. Kini si Rachel na siya. Kini po si Annabel Labrosa sa DYMR Radio Pilipinas. Nagpasalamat inyong tanan. Huwag nang hinaot mi nga nakakotlo mo o pa mga informasyon may kalabutan sa teknolohiya nga mo ay magpasayon sa ato ang paninabuhi, magpasayon sa ato ang mga gibuhaton sa matag-adlaw o gani matod pa nga bisan ang nga yung mag-lag Valentine's Day. Di na ka pwede pa. Kung layo kay ka, di na na hingon. I personal pa ni mo, no? Pwede na ka mo gamit sa teknolohiya. Bisan gani sa ato ang pagpatambal online na nga ito ang mga doctors ang ilang ipaabot nga ma-online ko, no? Kining pagpangumpisal na ito sa pare, no? Kati na all bakahan na. So, daghan kayong salamat. Umayong adlaw ka na itong tanan.